Welcome to the Profit Sense webinar selling more services during client meetings. Uh, my name is Marketing Manager here for Profit Sense, and uh, I just wanted to welcome you to today's webinar. Uh, we are really excited to be able to share some of the insights we have of, uh, after talking with uh, literally thousands of accountancy uh, professionals every month. We get a lot of information and hear about ways that we can uh, really serve the industry. Uh, and we wanted to share some of the insights that we have into the industry and some of the ways that you can improve your conversations with clients. Uh, and so that's some of the things that we're going to be covering today. But before I jump into the webinar and introduce who's going to be joining me today, uh, I did want to cover a little bit of uh, housekeeping items. Um, one, if you're curious about how you can find a copy of the slides or if there's going to be a recording of the webinar, you'll be emailed this following the webinar, but you can actually go right now into the chat box and find where I've sent a link uh, for you to be able to download this. So if you want to have your secretary or somebody else in the office go and uh, print those off so you can have a copy of this as well, you can do that. Um, or if you would like to review them after the webinar, we will send them to you. Um, and then also, I wanted to um, remind everyone on today's call that today is supposed to be interactive. Uh, and the best way to do that is to be sending in your questions through that chat box as well. Uh, so be looking on the uh, right nav screen of the GoToWebinar uh, to be able to enter in any questions you have uh, and any, uh, you know, even thoughts that you have on some of the, the things that we are uh, talking about today because we'd love to connect up with you and talk about those as well. Uh, and then finally, at the very end, uh, we'll, we'll really focus on a lot of those questions that you're answering. Uh, and Paul Savage, who I'm about to introduce, will be able to uh, answer a lot of those questions, and I'll also be joining him during that time. Uh, and then finally, right there, we just still have some of the call-in information. If you're having any issues with your audio, uh, you can call in those uh, numbers, depending on where you're at. And uh, the webinar ID is also there as well. Uh, so after that, I would like to jump in and kind of give you a little bit of background about ProfitSense and who we are. Uh, so ProfitSense has been around the past 20 years, and uh, you'll see in the description there uh, that we were uh, first founded in 1998, and it says SageWorks there, and so a little context about that is SageWorks is our uh, umbrella company, and, and ProfitSense is a product within uh, SageWorks, but you'll, you'll definitely see more of a, a ProfitSense presence and a name out there, and we're uh, you know, very active in the UK. We're going to be at Account Tech uh, in May, and also a lot of the 2020 group events throughout the year. So that if you're ever looking for how do I uh, actually find these people and have a conversation with us face-to-face, uh, -face, that's where we're going to be at. And then also we have a lot of our professionals over uh, in the UK as well. Uh, and so we've been in the finance industry since 1998, uh, and we are primarily an information, uh, financial information company. Uh, that turns that financial information into uh, software. And so what we'll take is a big data uh, conglomerate of, uh, of a database, uh, and we actually have um, one of the largest uh, real-time databases of private company financials in the UK. And you can see there that it covers over 600 industries and includes the industry-specific KPIs. Um, and these are ultimately to help uh, analyze the operational efficiency of a business. And the way that ProfitSense was first born was out of a love for the uh, business owner. And we really learned that the best way to uh, help business owners understand their finances and improve their businesses and become more efficient uh, would be ultimately to help equip um, the ones who know the most about businesses, which are the CPAs. Uh, so since you are so financially literate and able to uh, really get in and add value to clients, we wanted to equip um, the accountancy professionals uh, with tools like ProfitSense that can help them uh, engage their clients in a data-driven, actionable uh, conversations. Uh, and so uh, that's a little bit of our background. You can see there, too, that we've won some awards over the past few years. Um, and, uh, yeah, so uh, being that we are in the financial uh, software space, I did want to ask this one question just kind of uh, to see how everyone is uh, – I guess, gathering their information from their clients. And I'm going to go ahead and launch this poll here. Uh, and so this is, again, just kind of a, for us to get an understanding of what uh, software you're using to gather information from your clients. And I guess that really ultimately reflects what your clients are, are using. Uh, so you can go ahead and click on the uh, poll questions that are up. And there's Zero, Iris, QuickBooks Online, Sage. Um, and we've even thrown another option up there, too, for you all. So 
So we have about 50% of the people voted so far. Uh, so we're going to leave it open a little bit longer, try and get your uh, vote in there so uh, we can have that. Um, and then we will uh, close it out. All right, closing that poll. Uh, and in this next slide here, before we introduce Paul, this is just a legal statement that our legal team had us put out there. Uh, because we deal with so much data that is really used to forecast out the future, uh, this is something that uh, we show just to you know protect ourselves and uh, our legal team inform us that this would be helpful to show. Uh, so now I wanted to introduce uh, Paul Savage, um, who's an account manager here. Uh, at ProfitSense, and he's been kind of in every corner of the company, so he really carries a lot of experience with him, uh, not just from our company standpoint, but also from the standpoint of engaging with so many accountancy professionals. Uh, he has a real understanding of how to deliver value to clients, uh, and also an understanding of how to improve internal firm efficiency as well. Uh, so he has been uh, in, in our company for a long time and has gathered quite a lot of uh, information about the industry and, and uh, so he's been a great resource for me and for uh, everyone else here. So I'd really recommend uh, after kind of listening to some of the things that he's going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about today, to reach out to him if you just want to talk about the educational components of it or even uh, the functionality components of uh, ProfitSense. Um, and with that I'm going to introduce uh, Paul here and he's going to start uh, telling us what we're going to cover today. Thank you, Zach, and, and thank you to everyone for joining us this afternoon. Um, just real brief, take a look at uh, the agenda. Um, of course, really three main components, starting with techniques for selling more services. You know, what are the challenges that are you seeing? What are your opportunities? And what kind of solutions are available? Um, obviously, we, uh, we certainly love the profits and solution, uh, but um, there's other components that we may want to discuss, and if you have questions, um, certainly you can, um, you can continue to forward those in as well. Um, identifying um, how those opportunities work and how to sell those services. Maybe some example questions that we've seen that tend to work uh, during your engagements. Knowing your client's industry. Uh, one of the things I'm going to discuss, uh, particularly related within our brand, is how you can become an industry expert um, very quickly with our product uh, by using and leveraging um, the work of other firms, um, to, to put it mildly. Um, do's and don'ts of conversation management, what are the types of questions that you can ask um, that tend to have the most positive uh, response. Okay. Uh, industry insights to share with clients, uh, again we'll, we'll talk about that at length. Um, leveraging the data that we have uh, from years and years of collecting that information. Um, in the UK and beyond for that matter. Um, and then another thing that we're going to talk about is uh, a little bit unique. Uh, we're going to offer a complimentary industry data report. Uh, we'll have some contact details, how you can get in touch with me. Um, we'll produce that report. Um, but instead of just sending it to it, we'll talk a little bit about what's in it, what's important, what to identify for a client. Um, so it's a little bit more valuable than just a, a sheet of paper for you to take away. Um, but that's an offer that I would really um, highly encourage you to, uh, to take us up on. Today's webinar and also that uh, industry data report too that you can uh, actually talk with Paul about. Um, we're really focusing on creating a context for productive conversations with your clients in ways that you can be equipped to add value. Um, so that's kind of the, if we're going to summarize it up into one sentence, that would be what we're trying to accomplish here today. Um, and this is a, a little bit of an icebreaker cartoon that, uh, you know, we like to kind of add these at the beginning of, of uh, of uh, webinars, and I think that the gist of this was just kind of communicates is uh, you know, oftentimes I think accounting professionals can be really nervous about trying to go and sell more services out of a fear of coming across as too salesy or too strong-handed uh, and then kind of pushing away even the few services that they can offer to a client. Uh, and so really what we're going to try and talk about uh, is, is how do you sell, how do you sell your services? Uh, and how you don't really have to be strong-handed like, you know, we traditionally think about a salesperson, but instead it's ultimately about showing value and how that you provide that value. Um, and then it kind of happens naturally. And so, again, it's kind of thinking, you know, I'm not going to be this traditional, you know, kind of boiler room salesperson, but instead what I'm doing is I'm ultimately showing what value can I deliver to this person's uh, business uh, and connecting that to the services that you offer. And so uh, some of the things that we're going to kind of cover today is the, the context. 
um, where you find yourself uh, on a daily basis and, and even kind of a, the seasonality of, uh, of the industry too, just with uh, tax returns and, and other compliance oriented things that you have going on. And so uh, one of those things is it's just busy. Uh, you have a lot of clients and there's a variety of needs. Uh, and especially when you're focusing specifically on compliance uh, services or engagements, what you're starting to notice and what we've started to notice with many of our customers, there's this trend where they're, they're having to perform more uh, compliance work, um, but they're getting lesser return for that. And so you kind of see this, this trend in the industry of mergers and acquisitions of these smaller firms that aren't able to keep up with the amount of compliance work to keep the doors open and then having to sell to much larger firms that can't actually keep up with that, uh, with that uh, trend. And so one of the ways that we've seen people come back, one of the things that our product does is it helps uh, to transition from purely giving compliance services to also becoming an advisor, becoming a consultant, and that's really what we've noticed that businesses want too. They want to know how they can be more efficient, how they can have a sustainable um, business from, until they eventually get to the place where they want to sell the business. And so one of the opportunities that you have is the fact that they're interested in this, um, that business growth and, and uh, businesses' concern about their growth creates a financial interest. Uh, and so your clients are focused on growth just as much as you're focused on growth. And it just so happens that you grow as they grow. And that's kind of how we should think about being a consultant. If you can show a way for your client to grow their business, it will ultimately lead to growth in your business because you're going to be the one providing the services and getting the return from that. Uh, and the reason why you're so valuable is that oftentimes these business owners have a lack of working understanding of their finances. It's not that they're dumb. It's not that they don't understand things. It's just they don't have the time uh, or the experience that you have to really look into ways to improve the business and efficiencies. Um, and since you understand these finances, you're able to see what barriers there are to their growth uh, and really help them overcome them through the services and engagements that you can provide them. Uh, and so we're ultimately trying to look at uh, what are the goals that your customers have and how do the services that you have help them overcome the barriers to their goals. Uh, and ultimately, the solution to doing this is being able to provide value um, with industry insights that you have, uh, with the experience that you have. So one of the nice things that I, we always hear uh, accountancy professionals say uh, is one of the, the key things that they use is sharing stories about ways um, that other people in one of their clients' industries have overcome the very same uh, issue. Uh, and so communicating those, kind of telling stories and being a storyteller, and you don't, again, have to reveal who your client is, but you can tell them how you overcame that issue or that barrier to growth together uh, and communicating the insight that you have about the marketplace based off of the data that you have and based off of the experiences you have. And so ultimately, you bring value as the trusted advisor by bridging these insights for your clients and your prospects. And that's what will ultimately help you to sell. And so again, what we're just looking at here is kind of the challenges and opportunities and solutions that you can provide. And this is kind of setting the context uh, to the rest of our conversation uh, today. Yeah, and just to, to kind of add on to some of the challenges, um, you know, of course, if we really look at, at growth, what are some of the, the challenges that you're facing? Um, these are a couple of really important statistics we've seen throughout the marketplace. Um, the largest, of course, being that 80% of, of small businesses are switching their accounts because their former account did not provide proactive advice, um, only reactive advice, or really, if we dig into reactive, just compliance work. Um, so they're engaging uh, other firms or being engaged by other firms um, that are, um, they're really marketing themselves as that advisor. Um, and so the real question is, you know, when you look at your business practice, are you doing, are you doing the same? Um, you know, if half of, of, of businesses will switch accounts during their life, that's going to impact, of course, your business and your retention rates and so forth. Um, and then there's another study here done uh, throughout the U.S. that over half of businesses, you know, are actively being uh, prospected by competing firms. Um, so those are your peers that are out there trying to take, um, you know, business away, and they're doing so by 
um, not necessarily price, um, which is really a low factor when you consider why businesses change uh, accountants. It's generally because of the services that they offer or lack of knowledge of the services that they offer, which goes a long way as well. If you're not communicating the type of um, services that you will provide, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well, um, but that's uh, very important in the decision-making process, whether a client stays with a firm or not. Okay. You want to add anything on that? Yeah, I think one of the things to do, and this is one of the, the questions that we kind of have on the slide, is you know, what would be the, the impact on your bottom line if you lost one or two of your best clients uh, to your competition or the, you know, the kind of firms that you're, you're competing with? Um, and really kind of feeling the, the impact of that. And so the, the goal of this slide, again, is to uh, basically educate um, all of us on the importance of being uh, versatile and being able to offer many services and also being able to communicate the services effectively. Uh, so this is just a reminder to you of how important doing those two things are. Yeah, and, and, and just to kind of to continue on, the, on that thought, you know, on the services piece and what you can really leverage from a particular client, I think the, gra or, or the, the graphic below is a real good example of what you can do with one set of financials. And we'll talk a little bit about this on, when we look at, at profit sense, but just in general with your clients and, and not from a sales approach. Here's what you can do from one series of, of information. Of course, you've got your advisory services. Um, you know, you could think of sometimes that being called sort of that part-time CFO, but from a consulting standpoint, their financial analysis, compilations, audits, reviews, succession planning, loan package preparation, forecasting, valuation, all components that are available to you um, with just one client. So think of the service offerings that you can expand. Um, additionally, obviously, the more services you offer from one set of clients' financials, limits the amount of time that you're actually working with each individual client. Um, so you're able to spread your time out a little bit more um, because you've got, with a system like ProfitSense, for example, you've got all these options available to you at one touch, um, you know, and your investment in time is, is, is cut dramatically. One of the things, too, that we've heard a lot of firms doing, and uh, this is also something that many of the thought leaders in the industry have encouraged um, people to be doing, is when you start being able to offer these advisory services, what it enables you to do is to release um, kind of those um, C and D and even F clients that you're um, really frustrated with because they're hard to communicate with, they don't provide you their financials on time, they don't um, kind of engage with you uh, efficiently, and so you're able to kind of let them go and you're not worried about having to uh, retain them uh, because you're able to really dig into your A and B clients and, and identify tons of ways that you can serve them uh, and in ways that will also create uh, consistent and predictable revenue streams. And then uh, so one of the things that we want to talk about again is kind of that opportunity. What does it look like to identify those opportunities to sell to your A and B clients? Uh, and one of the, you know, very key things that Paul mentioned a few slides ago is just being able to communicate what you're actually selling. And you can you can see this with the, uh, you know, first bullet point that we have here, that a lot of times what ends up happening is uh, clients don't even know what their accountants are, are selling. They don't even know what their accountants are able to provide, uh, but then they're asking for it. Uh, so if you're able to even just simply educate your clients and your prospects on the things that you provide. And this doesn't just stop at, you know, throwing something up on your website, but it's also actively communicated when you're meeting with your clients. Uh, it's going into the marketing materials that you're creating as well. And, and uh, one of the things that we found a lot of uh, success in is when firms are including this into their newsletters. Uh, and being able to kind of always, uh, you know, the, the best way that you can educate is by continuing to repeat what you do have and what you can provide. Um, so that's kind of step one to identifying opportunities uh, to sell services is make sure you're communicating effectively and in various uh, locations uh, so that your clients and your prospects can actually see the services that you offer. Uh, another step that you can do when you're selling services uh, and this is one of the things that we found most useful. And this will kind of make a little bit more sense when Paul shows a little bit about uh, profit sense. Uh, but one of the things that we found most useful is when uh, 
accountancy professionals show a snapshot of the business or a snapshot of the industry so that the business can understand their overall performance. Uh, and you might be thinking, man, like to do that would take so much time, so much effort, so much expertise to really get an understanding of the industry and uh, that business. But with some of the tools that we have, it helps you to provide um, that snapshot in a very simple, automated fashion. Uh, and it helps, uh, you know, kind of create some questions uh, for you to ask your client or your prospects. And that then kind of gets to, to take about um, a route to what are some actionable changes that you can make in the business. So again, it's kind of almost like that diagnosing step where you're providing a snapshot and you're doing this as an added value component. Um, to, so, you know, I think one of the biggest mistakes people make a lot of times when uh, trying to sell more services to a client or to a prospect is by charging them to meet. Uh, and instead, of what you're wanting to do for this very first time when you're actually kind of providing a snapshot is just saying it's complimentary, come look at this, I've identified a few things so that you can really deliver the value for them to be willing to bite uh, onto uh, you know, what you can actually do for them and how their business can be improved. And then finally, that kind of goes into asking the right questions. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in a second. But first, before we do that, I wanted to uh, shift over the screen real quick to Paul. Uh, he's going to show us a little bit about what that looks like uh, in showing your, your client the current snapshot. Yeah, I think that did a great job of explaining that. And we want to attack it from a couple different angles. Um, we want you to be able to provide a current snapshot to your current client. Um, obviously, you want to take care uh, and keep those, um, you know, but also uh, from a prospect standpoint. So let's just deal with the, the snapshot for a prospect. So our number one difficulty in being able to provide that is we just don't have the client's financials. Um, so what we do uh, to combat that is we give you the ability to access um, data that's been entered by other users of ProfitSense. So essentially what happens, it's a cooperative data model. So as you enter in client data based on SIT codes, for example, we aggregate that information and then you're able to research that just at a code level. Um, there's no identifiable company information. Obviously, we want to respect privacy of, of these types of businesses. But we give you the ability to quickly pull a snapshot, and this is a good example of one. And you're talking about an investment of time on, of, under a couple of minutes for um, a firm. Now, this is going to allow you to look at the number of businesses that we have included in this metric. Um, not all businesses will be included because that information has to go through a series of filters um, so that it's as accurate as possible. But this is um, as close to a real-time figure as you really can get. Um, and it's going to provide access to the ratios that we track at a deeper level for your client snapshot. Okay? So very simply, you can come in, you can enter an industry code, instantly have a report. We give you full functionality to brand that on your own um, and provide that as a marketing collateral piece to go along with your prospect engagement. Now, if you are with an existing client, now we really can dive into their performance of the business and look at it more um, from an in-depth standpoint. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire report because we're going to have an opportunity to look at different components as we go, but I just briefly wanted to pull up one of our uh, reports, which, oddly enough, was initially called a snapshot, uh, but that's what's the purpose of. Um, so we wanted to look at several key pillars for a business, liquidity through assets. We also have access to employee productivity metrics as well as industry specific uh, ratios. Uh, Zach mentioned we have um, over 600 uh, total industries, but when we start to look at the real key ratios in those KPIs, we have those for 420 industries. And that information is fluid and growing, so with each client you have the ability to request new KPIs um, that we address uh, on a per-client basis for you, um, so that grows and changes as our business grows. All right, so I'm going to take back the screen here. All right, so the place where we left off is really being able to ask the right questions. Again, so with these kind of tools, or even without these tools, too, one of the key things is being able to ask the right questions uh, of your clients, of your prospects. Uh, and so these are just a few examples that I put on there that I found to be really helpful is, uh, you know, what are your business goals and what keeps you up at night? 
Uh, and oftentimes, one of the things that you'll find is a lot of times business owners what keeps them up at night um, or what their business goals are actually have to do with their families or actually have to do with something about um, themselves. Like they want to be able to retire at a certain age or they want to be able to send their kids to college or they want to be able to uh, do this or that. And so uh, being able to identify those things and even like being able to become a bit more personal and taking the, the business to who they are uh, will really help you understand what they're trying to strive for. Uh, and I would really like this last question too, is if you could fix one thing about your business, what would it be? And again, these are just conversations to have that kind of get things flowing. And as you actually look at uh, their, their, the data from the industry and even the data from the company, you'll be able to uh, really dive into this question a lot more in depth. And so these are just some uh, example questions that we included uh, here. And in, in, in one of the, you know, the key things that you see here is be interesting and be interested. Uh, and what that kind of summarizes as is, you know, ask questions, be listening, uh, but then also be willing to share. And again, you don't have to share the name of the client. Be willing to share some past uh, successes that you've had uh, with people, and especially if they're in the same industry as, as the person that you're talking with now. Um, in the ways that you've been able to work together to meet those goals that you um, have identified. And so these are something that you'll get in the slides and, and uh, honestly I, I know that a lot of people uh, enjoy having these as, as kind of a checklist to work through. Okay, okay. and so the next uh, thing that we want to look at is an important component is knowing your client's industry. Uh, and, and this kind of come back, comes back to you know, doing your research. And the question with that that we can kind of add on is, you know, how, how long does it take for you to become an expert in an industry? Uh, and you'd say years, um, and, you know, I've heard that. And, and it's really it's true. It rings true because it takes time to get that experience and it takes time to get the data and understand that data in a way that you can actually uh, add value to a specific industry. Uh, and it takes time to be able to look at what the key performing uh, indicators of the industry are in particular. And so having uh, that research, having that expertise is going to be able to help you to know your client's industry and to know your client specifically. Uh, and so I'm going to hand over the controls to Paul again real quick. And one of the things that I want to say as I'm doing that uh, is just as that data takes a long time to be able to collect, uh, we've really simplified ways for you to collect that data uh, in, in just a few moments. Great. Thanks, Zach. Um, so I want to just look at product a little bit. Um, I know we've got uh, a time um, scheduled later, but I think it really fits into this slide, uh, particularly when we talk about you know, encouraging your clients, um, telling them things that they didn't know, and challenging their clients. I think our product really addresses how you set up that engagement. Um, you know, if we look at our report summary, for instance, for this sample client we've got, we can see initially which categories they're excelling at. You know, point to an area where the company is performing well. Um, you know, highlight those um, because you really want, um, you know, to build uh, confidence for that particular business so that when you talk about things that they didn't know or challenges for that business, um, you know, they really kind of see, you know, that you're in it for them. You know, not just to talk about what they can do better, um, but also to celebrate their successes. Um, because there's going to be a lot of wins out there, but there's always going to be the opportunity um, for um, improvement. Um, so a report like our uh, old snapshot, if you will, um, helps you do that. Okay, so we've got our uh, successes. Uh, we color code it for you. Um, very simple for you to kind of go in and, and to kind of read. And this information is based on the historical performance their benchmark information that's been set, as well as real-time information. So it's a, um, a sort of a mixture of factors together and how we grade that client, but a great um, uh, snapshot. I'm just going to just use that word until I, uh, I pick something better. But um, it's stuck in my head now, so I apologize. But a great way for you to, to produce that information. And like Zach mentioned, the amount of time it would take you to pull this data and pull this graph where you can actually do this through a package like Xero, for example, and under under two or three minutes. Um, so we really want to make that process efficient. The other thing I want to talk about is how you can really compare a client. Um, so it's one thing to talk about um, just how they've performed against real time. Um, we give you a couple of options. I'm just going to open up some of this customization here. Not only can you look at our benchmarks, you can look at the real time data. 
you also have the ability to build your own client ratios. So let's say you've got some niche work out there and you want to talk about how um, there are, um, you know, faring against their peers, you can enter that information into ProfitSense. We'll actually do all the calculations for you and now you've got your client data to compare your uh, business against. So just another opportunity um, to, uh, to provide a comparison and engagement with the client. The other piece, of course, is from challenging the client. You know, what do those opportunities look like? It's one thing to talk about how a change in business can affect. It's quite another to be able to show it. We have a powerful forecasting tool that enables you to do that. It's a historical regression analysis that will look at the periods that you enter into our program and provide a ratio across their P&L statements, their balance sheet, their statement of equity, all the way through projected cash flow statements then giving you the functionality to go in and make almost limitless, I'm not going to say completely limitless, but I'm going to go almost, um, changes to it. Very robust in its capabilities, um, providing you not only um, the what-if scenario, the loan analysis, as we mentioned, but even if you wanted to pull a quick valuation for a business, having that at your fingertips in a matter of moments is, is really powerful when you're sitting in front of a client. Well, I'm take back the controls here, um, you know, and we'll jump back into uh, looking at the, uh, you know, ways that we can take this information. Uh, and, and primarily what, what Paul was talking about is, like, doing this is going to be able to help you to, one, kind of encourage your clients about areas where the company is excelling and also be able to explain why that's happening. That can be really useful for your clients to just kind of get some, uh, you know, parameters and, and some barriers to how they should continue to operate. Uh, if they find something that works well and, and you can identify that for them, uh, then they'll be able to uh, basically continue to uh, replicate that into the future. And then also one of the things that we found is most useful and especially in, in trying to uh, win a new client is telling them something that they don't know. Uh, for instance, how they stack up against the industry and their competitors. If you tell me that and I'm a business owner, like that's, that's a game changer. Um, and our tool really allows you to do that by being able to dig deep into the geographic region and also to the, uh, the, the size of the uh, revenue of the uh, company. Uh, and so also the last part would be challenging your clients. What are ways that you're going to be able to encourage them to improve? Um, and that might be increasing uh, in margin impacts and net profit. Uh, and perhaps you can motivate the client to make uh, some useful changes. So really let's look at digging down into the uh, metrics and the ratios and uh, being able to see what are things that you can just tweak a little bit that would actually make huge improvements to uh, the company. And so this is uh, one of the things that I, I find most useful when uh, talking about uh, how to sell. Uh, it's kind of the, the do's and don'ts of conversation management. Uh, and one of the things that we find uh, that primarily increases the productivity of these conversations is by adding value by educating the client. Uh, so you can talk about your services, but primarily if you're focused more so on the topic at hand, um, they're going to be draw, drawn in and see the value of your services. If you can educate them why uh, having a business that operates in a certain way is important, then they're going to be much more likely to listen to the services that you can uh, deliver to them. And that kind of flows into the second component of this, is in delivering insights about the industry and about their business. You always want to be able to deliver industries about their, uh, deliver insights about their context and about them individually. Uh, and being able to do this again, whether through it's, uh, whether it's through your experience of uh, stories uh, that you've had from other successes with clients, or if it's in your hard data that you have about the industry and about the business, uh, that's where the difference is made. And so finally, you're taking these two things and turning it into a conversation. And so you're wanting to use some of those questions that we had uh, sent over earlier uh, to help you to listen uh, and to be still and, and really know how the, the client is experiencing um, challenges and is experiencing even uh, good positive growth, too. Uh, and that way, it's going to help you really uh, narrow down your expertise into a quite a uh, few tangible ways of improving uh, their processes. And then these last two are important as well, is being direct uh, and bringing marketing materials. Um, being direct, uh, you know, at the end of the day, they know why you're there. Um, they know you're an accountant and they know that you're also a business just like they're a business. Uh, they understand that you are going to be talking about your services some. 
Uh, so don't shy away from that. Don't uh, think that uh, they're not expecting that or going to be taken off guard or upset about it. Uh, they understand how business works because they themselves are business owners. Uh, and also being able to bring marketing materials will help kind of visualize and then also um, be a reminder and serve as a reminder after you've left the office or after you've left the meeting. And then finally, these are the, the don'ts. Um, these are the things that uh, I, I found this uh, successful um, for uh, conversation management is not focusing on selling the service. Uh, if you go in you know, with, the, with the mindset of, I'm going to sell this one particular thing, it can oftentimes limit you. So don't jump to the service first, but instead, remember, go back to that listening, go back to this question asking, go back to the diagnosis, and go back to the educating and providing value. Uh, and it is services that will be, be coming to the surface, and you'll be able to identify them. And the other thing is don't pitch unless you're asked, um, or don't pitch unless it's appropriate. We could say that as well. Uh, pitching the, the service, again, should come at the very end. It shouldn't be the first thing you do when you walk in the door. Um, and oftentimes we find that the case is, is you know, we narrowed down these three things that we want to do, um, but we don't really have a real understanding of the company yet, and we haven't even provided why that service would be valuable. So again, it's hitting the value, hitting the education first, and finally pitching when asked or when it's appropriate. And then also is don't talk about pricing until the value has been communicated and understood. And this is something that's important that gets uh, reflected on all the time in regards to hourly billing versus value pricing. And you see most, a lot of the industry is slowly shifting over to value pricing. And when you're able to really identify how much a service is going to be able to serve uh, a client, uh, then you're able to you know, look at that as a percentage of, uh, of your uh, return. And so, again, kind of staying away from that until you're able to illustrate the value in a dollar amount um, should you start to talk about pricing. So with that, again, you know, kind of going back to the, the education and value that you can provide to a, a client or a prospect, uh, you know, these, these are some hard data points that uh, we have in our product and that Paul's going to share with us too. Yeah, more, more so than about these particular data points, but the importance of them. If we took anything from, from Zach's do's and, and, and don'ts, and, and to be honest, me over the last, uh, the last few years working with firms is if you focus on one component of your advisory services, and that's to deliver insights about their industry and their business, so much of the rest of that takes care of itself. Um, and that's really what we wanted to do. I mean, Zach, when he was talking about how SageWorks came about, um, said it's the love of business owners. And that's really what the product was designed for initially. Um, give it to a business owner, let them understand how their financials are impacting their business. Um, and I want to just talk, uh, not necessarily just about the data point, but, um, and in fact, Zach, if you can show my screen how important those KPIs are for a particular business. Um, obviously, we've got the other ratios, and we track that for every single client we have in, in the system. Um, but here, as I mentioned earlier, there's 420 industries. You can review these. You can pull them up. You can request more. Um, you know, I'm going to look at just a sample industry real quick for you. Let's take a look at pharmacies, for example. You know, what are some ratios above? above and beyond your normal turnover ratios, your liquidity, your profit margin ratios, things, again, that really are hot button topics for that particular client. I'm not going to read through all of them or their calculations, but I just want to show you how we address that, how we allow you to become an industry expert and to deliver that information. Turnover per square foot, for example, average prescription price, um, you know, gross profit margins across your prescriptions or non-prescription. Um, just a variety of different components that we enable you to provide your client very quickly. Um, you know, and again, just to to build that um, that trust as, as that advisor. All right. So now we have the uh, poll question that I'm going to uh, put up here for us real quick, and uh, this is going to uh, basically you know serve as a way for us to have a, a you know, conversation about taking uh, the things that we've talked about today to the, kind of the next level, so to speak, um, with your clients. You really want to be able to help uh, train you uh, with how to use uh, these insights. And again, uh, you know, this is free. This is added value to you. We care about the industry. We care about 
uh, you and your firm. So please take advantage of this. And you know, Paul again is an expert, and he'll work with you on uh, the specific industry you want to know about, and the, and the specific ways that you can actually talk to your clients um, or even prospects about these things. Uh, so take advantage of that. I'm going to leave the poll open for just a few more seconds. And while I do that, I just want to remind you to uh, go in and, and add any questions or thoughts that you have about uh, today's uh, presentation, even uh, you know challenges or successes that you've had. We'd really like to you know, make this as interactive as possible. Uh, and so that, I'm going to go ahead and close out the uh, poll, and we're going to keep moving right along. Yeah, I'm going to go through these real quickly. They're fairly straightforward, but I want to talk a little bit about, because one of the questions we get is, is where um, our data comes from. And it's really two basic inputs. Um, accountancy firms, um, such as, as a lot of you there, um, will put data in the system. Um, you'll have a choice to include it as part of our aggregate model. We do give an opt-out for that. Uh, but most firms are, are interested in kind of growing that database. It benefits all, if you will. Um, so uh, again, you'll have that choice. Or other finance professionals, perhaps you're a consultant. Um, you know, that's going to be your you know business advisor. It's going to be your two main sources. Uh, that information is anonymous. We do not take any identifiable uh, client information. We don't even allow you to put your client's name into the system, um, you know, uh, just to make sure that it's protected um, as best as possible. And of course, that equals a, a very large uh, real-time database, um, updated daily around 3 p.m. Uh, your time. Um, so, um, you know, if you're uh, if you want to watch that, you can see that process happen. Uh, but it is daily. Um, and it really builds into that uh, industry data model that, um, that you see here. Um, so that information flows into our system. Zach, if you can look at the next screen. Uh, you can see, for example, for this particular uh, you know, industry, um, you know, whether or not there's 200 or 700 particular uh, businesses that are part of that comp uh, component there. So. Now, how do you put that data in the system, of course? Um, we give you a variety of, of avenues to, uh, to utilize our system um, and to be as efficient as possible. Um, you see a few listed here, Excel, um, uh, Caseware is not listed here, Xero, uh, QuickBooks Online. Um, but probably the best part is where it just says accounting software. We're able to work with your specific solutions. We're able to do that. Um, the uh, trial balance integration. So you're able to download your reports out of your AP platforms, bring them into ProfitSense, create company profiles so that you can use them over and over again. Uh, we really want to make that process as efficient as possible so that you're not having to spend a ton of time producing the reports. Your time is going to be working with the client specifically. Okay. Okay. So just one more thing to kind of discuss and um, is, is a way that uh, we're going to do a little bit of an offer for you guys, something that we haven't done um, before. Um, we're going to allow you, um, for firms that come on board with ProfitSense, to enter in your client data for you at no cost. Okay, so we're going to give you, and there's a couple little disclaimers down at the bottom, um, that it's going to be three clients. Um, it has to be formatted in Excel. Um, unless it's zero, and then we've got some options ar around that. Um, but this is going to allow you to pull your industry insights and to add value, um, to leverage the insights uh, to attract new clients. Um, you know, we've talked about identifying weaknesses and opportunities and challenges as part of your consulting services, and to save time if you're performing a business valuation or a exit strategy summary. Um, you're going to have client data and client reports pre-built for you into the system. Um, you'll simply provide that information. Uh, uh, to us. That offer expires April 8th. To work with that, of course, you can just contact me. My information uh, is below. Uh, but just kind of a neat uh, thing for you guys taking your time uh, out today and, and, and spending with us. Um, we want to make sure that we, we gave something um, as a nice takeaway above and beyond. And don't forget the industry data report as well. Um, I did also, um, actually, let's go to the next screen and we're going to kind of pick it up there. Zach, sorry. Yeah, so just an overview of the product, and we're going to go through this quickly because we've had a little bit of a taste of some of the products, and I want to make sure there's time for a Q&A, um, and my, also mindful of your time, but just a couple highlights of the ProfitSense solution itself. Um, globally accessible, easiest way to, to, to sort of describe that, it's a web-based solution, so you can access it from your iPad, your laptop, your PC, 
Um, you can pull up a report on your phone if you really want to. Um, so very accessible, simple integration of financials. Um, you know, for example, um, I don't come back to it just real quick, but your industry data, your loan analysis, cash flow projections. Um, we talk about the data integration. I wanted to just take a brief moment to show you guys the zero of integration and just how simple that works um, if you happen to have uh, that platform. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you from scratch on how to build a client. Okay. And we can see just how quickly we can pull a report. So I have an option to choose from my four reports. I'm going to choose the narrative. That's where we provide benchmark analysis, real-time analysis. I'm going to add a new company. We're going to do Zach's new accounting firm. All right. Actually, Zach is going to own a restaurant. Okay, I like food too. Zach's piece. <laughs> All right, so we've got a restaurant. We built a profile again. No identifiable information was required. We're going to say new financial statement. We're going to access our integrator, which is going to give us all of our choices. You did notice there was a manual entry field. That's another option as well. We're going to go to zero. It's going to connect to our zero account. Okay, so if you already have zero open, for example, you skip this stage. Okay. This is a zero link page between the two platforms. Your clients will show up here. Select your client. Hit authorize. Your client's financials will now be connected with profit sets. You simply identify what periods of data you want to include in their analysis. So I believe on this sample company I have monthly data. So I'm just going to go in and pick my month. That is my most current in here. Okay. Choose what periods I want. Okay. I can review those settings or I can go with what Zero has already set up as a default or what you have set up through Zero as a default. Okay. And then I can generate a report. Okay. Let's me review my information. I think this sample is a little light on data, but um, the idea is, again, under a couple of minutes, being able to look at a completed uh, report. Right. Now, of course, within that report, and it says here, fully customizable. So if you want to change your accounting methods, you want to change the color of your graphs, if you'd like to see it in PowerPoint with notes that we pre-build into the system, that's all going to be done and giving you an option. And here's just some of those customized uh, options here for you. You know, choosing whether or not you want certain sections in the report. Perhaps this engagement is really going to be sort of a shorter, um, a shorter overview of the business. You could come in, you could choose which sections you want to include. Maybe you just want a one-page summary. And that's going to be instances where that is appropriate for that particular business, not necessarily a longer engagement. You can choose what is most important for that business. Maybe in a couple of successes, a couple of opportunities, and there you've got an engagement profile already built for you. So what are some of the benefits of, of ProfitSense? Is that you want to show? And I think we, we've kind of discussed these, but quickly diagnose your client's financials. Um, not only to, to identify new services, itself, but also just to show how they're performing um, and to be that advisor. Um, using our, our data-driven, our data, uh, and leveraging that information to drive your conversations with both clients and prospects. Let them see their benchmarks. Let them see their peers. Let them see real-time information. You've got the ability to pick and choose how you want that conversation to go. Okay? And then, of course, take all that complex financial information and put it in an easy-to-understand uh, format, whether it's graphs, ratio analysis, narrative reports, or the projection for that matter, um, you know, a variety of ways for you to communicate that information. All right, so we're coming now to uh, our last poll question here. Uh, and we, we do these webinars pretty frequently, and so one of the questions uh, we like to ask at the end here is uh, what kind of uh, topics are you interested in? What are things that uh, would help your firm uh, to improve, to become uh, more of what you want it to be and more of what uh, you hope uh, can best serve your clients? And so here are some of the uh, 
options up here. You can go ahead and answer those and, and let us know what would be um, most useful to you. And then when we put that webinar together, we will reach out to you. And uh, if you would like us to reach out to you, regardless of what topic ends up winning here today, you just go ahead and write to the chat box, save my seat, uh, and we'll reach out to you. Uh, and we can even go ahead and register you uh, just to help save some time. Again, as uh, I'm leaving this open for the last few seconds here, I just wanted to encourage anybody to uh, ask some questions or, some, or give us your thoughts on today's webinar uh, in the chat box here, uh, and, and that way we can kind of walk through them with Paul. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close down that poll, and we're going to move on to uh, our Q&A session with Paul. Uh, he's going to be able to... Uh, give us a little bit more about uh, today's topic and also about the ProfitSense product. Uh, so one of the first questions that we have here, Paul, it looks like I uh, wanted to know what does uh, the onboarding and consulting component uh, of ProfitSense look like at a firm? Sure. Um, that, that really is, is sort of um, you know, my forte. Um, so and I'm not uh, the big uh, the sales uh, salesy type guy, but I really want uh, the firm to succeed. So it really starts with a uh, an activation call, if you will. We want to get to know the firm. What are your um, what are your opportunities? What are you looking for? Um, you know, profits to provide. Um, what are your challenges, um, both in the marketplace or perhaps even internally? Um, so really get to know the firm quite well. Um, from then, I'll build a training profile. Um, and that training profile, depending on your business, um, usually is two to three sessions, all of them under 45 minutes, so fairly quick. Um, I do build a little bit of homework in there, so um, you know you do uh, you do have to stay engaged with me through that process. But it's important because it tends to bring up questions and things like that, and I'd rather get them out early um, so that you can really kind of run with the product. Um, so the onboarding is fairly simple; it's a fairly intuitive product. Um, I think you get a little bit more. Um, you know, questions around some of the projections or perhaps even the review where there's a lot more moving pieces and, and uh, functionality um, that you can address in there. Um, but uh, it's a very smooth process. But from there, it's, it's, it's really, um, I kind of consider myself a partner with the firm. So Zach writes a lot of great content and some of our other thought leaders do as well. So I'll communicate that uh, information throughout the, the uh, length of a license. Um, of, of course, we'll keep you up to date with product enhancements four times a year at a minimum, there's going to be an enhancement to the product. It could be small things like new graphs, um, but it could be larger um, as well. Um, and by the way, those are all included in the license. It's not as if we're going to in, uh, include a new uh, component and, and try to go back. Um, uh, it's all built as part of your um, your agreement with uh, with ProfitSense. Um, so very smooth process, but from there it's, it's about firm success. Um, if you run into um, you know issues or things like that, um, then of course I'm there to help you succeed uh, as well. Thanks, Paul. Uh, one of the uh, next questions that we have is about uh, chat. This is what it says. It says um, you mentioned earlier uh, that we should be thinking about ways that we can challenge our clients and our prospects to make improvements into their business. Uh, challenge has a negative connotation. Uh, what do you mean by challenging our clients and prospects, and how do you do that well? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't really. I understand that, uh, but I think think of challenge less confrontationally as opportunity. It's really the same thing um, when you're looking at from our engagement perspective. Of, you know what um, what opportunities do a business have? You know, if you were to look at an industry data report that we provide, and you notice that a business is margin, for example, is well below uh, their peers, that's, a, that's an opportunity. Um, you know, they're not taking home a, a, as much um, from, each, um, from each transaction as they should. So challenge on where there is. Are there, is there opportunities with different suppliers? Um, you know, what can we drill down and see as, um, as a, um, a benefit for that particular business? So um, you can interchange challenge and opportunity. I know it's for me, it, it's really about taking a look at a business, identifying what can be done, um, you know, to increase whether it's profitability or growth or, or a variety of things in a business, um, and then using our product to kind of, um, you know, to show how that works as well. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Uh, here's another uh, quick question, and this is 
just kind of about client meetings. Um, how often do you recommend meeting with clients? Um, you know, I, I think I'll speak a little bit to how our software tends to lend uh, meetings. I think particularly with our narrative report, um, where you're really discussing a bunch of ratios um, uh, from a historical standpoint, I think your best bet is to look at that quarterly or annually. Um, however, um, you know, from a, a higher engagement level, whether it's monthly, perhaps you're doing a monthly cash flow projection, you're using our forecasting model for that. Um, so a lot will depend on the client's specific needs. Um, I think our reports lend differently to um, to certain aspects of that. So if you're looking at, um, you know, monthly health checks for a business, um, then perhaps the projections a little bit better served where you can do monthly, you know, as far out as a few years. Um, so you really can make sure that they're keeping track um, or they're tracking along the lines that you're expecting. Awesome. Uh, what do you, here's another question, what do you find uh, most important to uh, business owners? And I, I think that might be a little bit vague of a question, but I guess the, the question asker is more so, uh, what, what are ways that I can kind of connect with the needs um, of my, my clients? I, I think the biggest thing, and, and yeah, it's, it's a little vague, but it's, I think, a good question because a lot will depend on how you um, really get to know them. Um, you know, perhaps, um, you know, Zach has, has shared how many small businesses plan to, um, you know, sell within a five-year period, for example. Um, so maybe exit strategy planning, uh, valuation, um, you know, are all important pieces. I, I want a certain value for my business. Well, what do we do to get there? Okay. Mm -hmm. Our software will allow you to do that. So maybe it's the exit strategy. Maybe it's keeping the lights on. Right, and that's where you know again you could utilize our projection, that type of thing. Um, you know, what does monthly cash flow look like? Okay, or maybe it's just the general improvement of the business and and kind of um, you know making sure that we're uh, competing at a level that we should. And of course, you know, our products will will do that as well. So a lot will depend on what you get to know uh, from that customer. Um, I hope that I hope that makes sense. Yeah, that's really useful. And one of the things that you know you think of Paul is uh, the the concern that. Uh, a lot of businesses have just with their cash flow uh, and, and getting that in there. And, and that's one of the things that I've seen, uh, you know, really from watching you, Paul, is, is talking with clients about um, dealing with, you know, whether it be their inventory, uh, you know, turnover, or even accounts receivable, accounts payable, and focusing on those areas to make sure that you're uh, kind of getting a faster cash conversion cycle uh, so that you can invest your cash. Um, so that, that's the uh, kind of the end of the Q&A there. If you have any more questions, please feel free to contact Paul. Uh, and He will uh, be back in contact with you. Uh, and we'll be reaching out uh, no later by the end of the day on Friday with a copy of the slides and a recording. And uh, also, you know, uh, we'll be reaching out about the, the free industry report that you asked about. And uh, we'll be also registering uh, those who are interested in the uh, upcoming webinar. Uh, so thank you for spending some time with us today, and uh, we hope you have a good rest of the week and enjoy your uh, weekend.